Hi there, welcome to the third episode of my story, The Ride. I hope you enjoyed the second episode. If you still haven't listened to that one, please go to my previous posts and listen. And don't forget to leave a comment. Now let's get right into it. Episode 3 I needed to be far away from my mom. I needed her to miss me. To miss the little house chores I did. To miss the way I cooked my beans that she loved. I hoped that my distance would make her realize how much she loved me and how she wanted me back home. Needless to say, I passed the examination and officially left my mom's shackles. Or so I thought. We resumed school on the 22nd of October 2011. Now, the life in Unisic was a far cry from the kind of life we envisaged we would be living once we entered the university. My schoolmates and I would all gather at the quadrangle in secondary school and discuss about how interesting our lives would turn out once we entered the four walls of Unilag. The boys would freely mingle with, the clubs would go to all night, the freedom to finally have sex. Well, that was for those of us who were still virgins and not lesbians at the time. It was a sad reality that Ada and I had to face. A town where the sun set at 6.30 p.m., and 8 p.m. was considered dead of the night. A town that interpreted fun as going to the pool sides of hotels and drinking oddly named lager beer such as Life and Hero alongside large bowls of ECU goldsmiths in beer parlors. Oh gosh. The first time my mom called me to find out how life was for me in my new school, I was not sure if it was sympathy I could sense in her voice because for a reasonable amount of time she was quiet. When she finally spoke, she did not sound like the woman I knew. She was low and slow. She asked me if I wanted to remain here or go to a private school. I wanted to tell her that I would love to go to a private school but I didn't want to leave her that all alone in this street hole. So I just said I was fine here. She hissed and ended the call. And we never spoke about it again. Ada stayed with me at Auntie Chica's apartment for the first three months. As if the condition of the town was not bad enough, Auntie Chica had a copy of our lecture schedule and called us the moment the last lecturer for the day left the class. She said my dad entrusted me in her care and she did not want anything to happen to me. So it was a proper cycle. Home, school, home, school, church, home, school. Whenever our classmates spoke about the parties they were attending or places they went to, Ada and I just remained quiet. We were bored out of our minds. So we devised a way out of our predicament. Since Ada's parents knew she stayed with me in my auntie's place, they only needed to call me to ensure that we were both fine. So Ada would get a room off camp and whenever we needed to go out and have fun, I would go over to Ada's. About funding, we did what every smart student would do. We padded each and every of our expenses until we had enough money to rent a room for a year and furnish it to our taste. The hostels of campus were divided into two main sections. The ones at the temporary site where the school was previously located before it moved to a bigger site and the ones at the permanent site where the school is currently located. The site was where everything happened. It housed the most exotic hotels and bars the town had, and the people who stayed in Thames site were considered the big boys and girls in the school. We chose to stay in Thames site. Well, Ada chose, and Melly concurred, in Mercy Hostel to be precise. Mercy Hostel was just a street away from Queen Street, which was the hotel that housed all the sought after parties in Oka at the time, and Ada was sure it was the right location for us. Informing Auntie Chica that Ada was leaving her house for the hostel almost blew our cover. My aunt took it personal. She felt it was her fault. She wanted to know if it was something she did, if Ada had not been well taken care of. When she asked Ada for her parents' numbers so she could call them to find out why they wanted Ada to leave her place for the hostel, was when I saw parts of my friend I never knew existed. Ada came up with a very funny story of how thieves came to her house the week before and stole all the gadgets they had at home and how there was no way to contact her parents for now. She said her mother would be coming down to the east in two months to see my aunt and thank her for her help so far and that was how Ada gained her freedom. You see, Auntie Chica had been married for seven years and had no issue. It was diagnosed that she had polycystic ovarian syndrome and her womb would be unable to carry a child. She had lost all hope of giving birth, 
So she took care of every young person she came in contact with like her child. She always says that God had given her the mandate to take care of other people's children. So she blamed her dad's exit on herself. She began to say things like, this is the reason why I cannot have my own child. I do not know how to take care of young ones. I am not good enough to be a mother. She stopped eating. Her husband was a businessman. He sold imported doors and pumping machine in Onisha Market. Every time he got back from work, he would sit with auntie in the living room, explaining to her how her dad leaving their house was not her fault, that it was just meant to happen. As I watched them, I wished I could tell them the real reason why she left. But what would I have said? That she left because she wanted freedom to stay late with boys and go clubbing, or that I also had plans of leaving the house too. When I spoke to her dad about A's in school, she just said, my dear, what is important right now is for us to come up with a perfect plan on how you leave her house to. That way, she can grieve at once and everybody's life can go on. This might sound like a really cruel thing to say, but that was exactly what we did. To be continued, like this episode, I would appreciate it if you share it with a friend, family member or colleague. I would also like to know your thoughts on the episode. I want to hear from you. This is another one from talktoyourhomie.com. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.